Hi there everybody, it's Halsey from Slim and Stylish. Thank you for joining me today. I'm a UK Stamping Up independent demonstrator. Today I have made this cute little jewellery wrapped box. Inside it is the jewellery box and I've just popped it in and I've created the wrapper for it. The box itself measures two and three quarter inches by two and a half inches and it is just over one and a half inches wide. And it just pops inside the box and what I love is this lid goes on quite tight. It does fit on with a bit of a push but it, it means whenever I give this to someone for their birthday if they put this in a bag it's not going to fall apart. It's still going to be the present when they get it home because that is it's a tight lid. I've used the beautiful pop of petals clear mount stamp set and the punch. I love this set, it's probably one of my favourites from the new catalogue and this is the stamp I used which is I think the one I'm probably going to use the most in this set, I love it. So let me show you the measurements for it. You're going to need your scoreboard and you need two pieces of paper and a scrap piece. It's very minimal with this and then I have the polka dot ribbon as well. So your two pieces of paper that you need this one is four and one eighth of an inch high by nine and a half inches wide. And the black piece is a tricky one. <laughs> it's four and three quarters of an inch. But I don't know whether you can see, it is just a slight bit, probably about two millimeters, three millimeters bigger than it needs to be. It is just over that notch, but not worth the measurement. And this is three and three quarters, but again, it is just over that notch. And that's because you just want that slight difference to pop the lid on. So it's only a slight bit. Okay, you want your punch, sorry, your scoreboard. <laughs> punch board, you want your scoreboard. And on the long width widthwise, you want to put it in that way and score at three inches. I've already done it, if you can see, because I started this once when the battery went on my camera. So I've already started scoring it and it's just down at the three inches. Okay, that's all you want to do for your first score mark. And then with your score mark, it folds that way so you want to turn it over and this is the bit we're going to be stamping on. So you want to use your memento ink. I've already got my stamp ready to go and I'm just going to grab a piece of scrap. I've got a piece of scrap under here. I have. I'm just going to pop it under because my stamp will be off the page. So ink it up and then I'll try and do it so you can see from overhead. You just want to line that up so the bottom of the flower meets the score mark like that. So it's just sitting above it. Okay. Oh, sorry, that's my head trying to get in the way to see. Sorry, I've sent you all giddy. Let's have a look again. There we go, and you want to keep doing this all the way along. I'm not moving the stamp round, I'm keeping it in the same direction so the flowers look the same. Mine are going up a bit because I can't really get my head over to see that it's still in the right place. That's the right place, just on the score line. It's so hard to design a project when you can't get your head completely over the top of it. But that's all you want to do on that. Just bring my lid over. And then you want to score again. Again, because you want it to fold inwards that way and that way, you want to turn that upside down and you want to score at one and three quarters of an inch. Sorry, I've got my measurements under the table here. Let me move them and then I can get the whole scoreboard in for you. So you want to score it at one and three quarters of an inch, which is there, and then two and three quarters of an inch. So add the three quarters inch on, one, two, so it's four and a half inches. So it's one and three quarters, four and a half. Then you want to add another one and three quarters, so that is six and a quarter. And then you want to score again at nine. 
let me just read those out to you. It's one and three quarters, four and a half, six and a quarter, and nine. Let me just grab my snips. I'm not sure where I put them. There they are. I was using the um, flower bundle yesterday. And um, I was doing loads of die cuts and they'd all got stuck so I was using the top of my scissors to poke them all out. Multi-purpose scissors. So all I'm going to do is just cut that thin rectangle that was there out and tab that in. Okay. And then I'm going to cut straight up there on that score line and tab that bit in. Same with this, straight up there and tab that bit in. Tab that bit in there. And then straight up on this one and tab in again. So your sort of silhouette looks like that and you have all your score marks down. Before I fold them and score them, I'm just going to get, this is my tatty scrap, ignore this. <laughs> I'm just going to get my fine tip glue gun out and I have my dazzling diamonds just there. Ignore the one that's on this tab because that's going to be glued down. So that one ignore, but all of the others... I am just popping a little bit of glue into the center like that okay pop my lid on and then I'm just sprinkling the dazzling diamonds on so it just gives it the shimmer to the box. Just tap that off. And I'm just going to leave that to dry while I do the lid and the other decorations that to the side where I know I'm not going to knock it. I am a dab hand at knocking this all over the carpet. I really do, quite often. So I'm just going to bring in the scrap paper now and I'm going to look at my punch and the punch is lined up, up so that the wavy piece one goes off and I think doo -doo -doo -doo, that's that one. You can get a rough idea by having a look at it that way around. And I'm just going to stamp and punch three out. One, two, three. line them up and punch. I don't know if you had the flower shop bundle before. I used to love the flower shop bundle with the pansy punch. However, I could be there for ages trying to work out which way round to punch the flowers. This is so simple. It's really easy to work out the alignment on it. And then I'm just going to take one of these and add my glue. Again. lid straight on. I am so naughty. I always leave my fine tip glue as soon as I've used it. I put it at the side but I don't always put the lid back on and then obviously it's it's gunked up and I can't use it anymore so always make sure you put your lid straight on. Let's just pick up some of that. Just put that on the side to dry as well. And that's everything with the dazzling diamond, so you can put it away. So for the lid, I'm just going to take my black piece of card 
and I'm going to go round on each side and score at an inch. So I'm going to score the inch, turn, score, turn, score, turn, score at an inch each side. Oh, didn't do that very straight. Fold each part. Just bring my bone folder in to make sure they're nice and crisp. And then I'm going to just do the tabs on each side as a bit of a windmill. So you do the one. Turn and do the next one. Oh, do that edge as well. Turn and do the next one. I'm sorry, I know it's so hard to see score lines on black card. And then turn and do the next one. looks a bit like a windmill, it's got one folded bit on each side. Okay and then all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use my Tombow. You can use sticky strip for this, sticky strip might be easier but it's on my desk behind me so I'm not going to reach over for it. The end of my tombow, I think. It's taking a bit of a shake. Just gonna do that one as well while that's there. And there we go. Make sure it's straight, you don't want to have it just off. A little bit because it is such a tight lid you want it perfectly straight so it will go straight onto the top okay and then for the ribbon where did I put the ribbon there it is you just want to cut off a nice long piece that's going to go around and tie as a nice knot so probably about there Okay, there's no back or front to this. So if you just use your snail, and put a strip of it on the back, carry the strip around the side, just so that the trim stays in the right place. I don't want that falling off either. Half your ribbon so you know where the middle is. There, that's my middle. And just stick that down. Pull it across and stick it down. Pull it across and stick it down. There we go. And then you're ready to just tie the bow on the top. It is easier to tie the bow when it's attached to the box because it stops it from being such a flimsy lid. So if you struggle in, just wait until the box is created and then put the bow on. There's my bow. Now for the box, hoping you're dry. You're not. I'm just going to grab my heat tool just to quickly dry those off for the purpose of the video. It's 
not really ideal deal to do that because um, it does warp the card. However, it means it's for a video. I want to kind of get this finished quickly for you. So you're just going to fold all the pieces across. And just burnish all of those lines. I've done it this way because I'm trying to be delicate on my... Uh, on my flowers and the same with this one while I'm just waiting for that I suppose I can construct my pansy so with your scoreboard it's not a pansy <laughs> me and flowers I'm not very good at this sort of stuff I know which ones are get the point of the tip on a relatively straight line and just drag your scoring tool down it so that it's straight And all you're going to do with it is you're just going to bend each one in like that. Come in with your scissors and it's just a slight snip, just sort of down to where the ink is, just so you can get a bit more pop into your petals. And then when you punch them together, bring them both up. Add a glue dot. Onto the bottom petal, which is the one that's straight. Pop that one on at an angle. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop the other one that I put the glitter on and pop that on top as well. But I'm waiting for that glitter to dry too. Okay, how are we doing? Yeah, we're doing better. The heat gun worked. Okay, so fold these down, fold these across and burnish them. One. Two. One tip I will say when you're working with Whisper White is to make sure all of your tools and surfaces are clean because it gets so grubby so quick. Okay. With this, I'm just going to use... Grab my sticky strip if I can locate my sticky strip. There it is. Might be a bit quicker than waiting for the Tombow to dry. Just tear that off and stick that down. And then with this, you want to put that together and work out which one of these will be your front and your back. So to do that, put this together, like that, bring in both the sides. That's going to be the back because that's where it's got the seam. So that goes there and this one you're just going to pop a couple of bits of sticky strip on. this one in, fold that one in and just use your bone folder to go in from the middle and stick that down and there's your front and there's your back and there is your already done lid just push on there we go now with the petal that goes on the front this loose flower hopefully that's dry now yeah, it's quite. So you just want to cut down now all the way to your glue bulb so it's a bit further than you cut before. Get a sticky strip off my finger. 
finger. You want to score again down the leaf straight. But in addition to doing this this time, you also want to use your bone folder to curl the leaves. So pinch them in. Use the curled part of your bone folder here just to get into the leaf and to curl it. You see, it's a bit flimsy because you have cut it down, so be delicate with it. But as soon as you've got your glue dot and put it on your flower and stuck it down, it won't be flimsy anymore. Okay, just pop that in the middle. And there is your flower to go on top. I'm just going to pop a glue dot on the back. So the glue dot goes on the back of that, like that. And just pop that on there. And that is the end of the pop of petal box. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I quite love it. The one thing I will say with it is using the black paper on top of the Whisper White, it has just marked the top. However, as it's covered in the box, you can't really see it, but that is the problem with using Whisper White in projects, really. But I like the fact that you didn't need any DSP and it was all stamped and punched using this new set. Love it. Thanks, everybody. See you soon.